So we're now into um, video two for market failure from topic five. And the title of this video is Merit Good Market Failure and Demerit Good Market Failure. Again, what we're going to consider is why these two are examples of market failure and what the government does to intervene in the free market to correct these problems. Uh, a merit good is very similar to a positive externality in that it is under consumed. The difference between this and a positive externality is the reason why it's under consumed. A merit good is under consumed because people lack information. They have information failure about private benefits. So they, they're unaware of the of the benefits they will get from consuming a certain product. Uh, good examples are things like fruit and vegetables, uh, with some people water or exercise, um, so things like running for example, things that people under consume, don't understand the benefits it will do for them. And what we said this is because of is information failure. Okay, now what we can do again is graph this in a diagram. We've got an easy diagram and we've got a more difficult diagram. We'll do the easy one first of all. So when we have information failure, people are undervaluing merit goods. They're paying P1 and consuming Q1 in a free market economy. We want people to consume more. So if we were to increase supply, maybe through a subsidy, we can lower the price to increase consumption and therefore correct the market failure. If we went for the more difficult diagram, again, we'll start off with an equilibrium diagram. And we'll label it P1, Q1. However, the problem is that this demand line is incorrect. People are undervaluing the product. They should be at this demand line here, so the demand correct line. So if people consume this good in the right quantities and pay the right price, they would be at P2, Q2. So somehow we've got to get people to consume more of this product. Now if people stay on the incorrect demand line, subsidies can solve the problem. We go down the incorrect demand line to this point here. That point is so important because this is the point where people will consume Q2. If we can get supply to shift and go over that point there, people will now consume Q2. Difference is they will now pay P3, but we still correct the problem. Very quickly, let's think about government intervention in this marketplace. So how can we solve the problem? So the free market leads to underconsumption. How can governments intervene to correct the problem? We've just mentioned subsidies. One great way, make it cheaper, more people will do it. We can use regulation. We can make it a legal requirement to consume merit goods. We can make it a legal requirement for people to go to education. Therefore, they realise more benefits for themselves. We can also use state production. So what we mean by this is the government can provide merit goods, um, normally free of charge, they produce them then people consume them in greater quantities. So there are some different options there. Now let's move on to demerit goods. These are very similar to negative externalities. Let's rub that off, I made a little mistake there myself. These are very similar to negative externalities in the sense that they are over consumed. The difference between these and negative externalities is the reason why they're over consumed. Negative externalities are over consumed because people don't consider the external costs in a free market. Demerit goods, people lack info, so information, about private costs. They don't understand the damage that products do to themselves, so things like nicotine, alcohol, drugs, um, maybe driving their cars, sometimes under, fail to understand the damage that some products do to themselves. And again, this is because of information failure. And again, let's think about how we can graph this. 
we've got a simple diagram and we've got a more difficult diagram. Simple diagram, we start off with an equilibrium point. So in the free market economy, people will consume Q1 and pay P1 for this particular demerit good. If we want people to do less of it, we need to raise the price. If we can impose an indirect tax to supply at S1, this clearly will raise price to P2 and lower consumption to Q2. We've therefore corrected the problem. Um, let's think about the more difficult diagram. Again, we've got an equilibrium point. So people over-consuming it, P1, Q1 is the equilibrium point. Again, though, this demand line is wrong. It's incorrect. That scribble there does say incorrect, by the way. If people were demanding in the correct quantities, they would be at uh, this one. I'll call it D1 for simplicity. That is the correct demand line. Now, what we can do then, in fact, is say that we want people to consume Q2 of this product. If we can't get people to shift to D1, they stay on D. So what we have to do is to look at what price we have to charge people to make them consume a lower demand of this um, demerit good. Now you can see there that I've labelled P2. That's the price that people will pay to demand only Q2 of this product. So if we shift supply over this point, S1 through an indirect tax, again we've corrected the problem. So government interventions here, mentioned the most obvious one being indirect tax so raise the price less people should want to consume it subsidies provide people with a realistic alternative at a lower price so for example if too many people are playing on their xbox 360s uh, not getting exercise well let's provide gyms free of charge or playgrounds in bigger quantities we can impose regulation we know smoking creates many private costs what we can do then is impose bans, restrictions to who can smoke. We restrict the nicotine content in certain cigarettes. Again, state production. So make alternatives free of charge provided by the government, which will solve the problem. Now for both merit and demerit goods, we can see that the problem is created by information failure. Well, one great solution to both of these problems is provide people with information make people aware of the benefits of merry goods they should be more keen to do it demand it demerit goods make people aware of the private cost the harm that certain products do to themselves and that should in theory mean that people will demand less of these particular products and that is the end of merit good demerit good